go. Well, welcome to the Welcome to Profession and Graduate Awards Ceremony. I'm so glad to see so many family, friends, faculty, staff here today celebrating the guest of honor, the class of 2021. My name is Dr. Fraser Horn, and I have the humbling honor of being the Dean of Pacific University College of Optometry. Um, as MC, I have the privilege of ushering you throughout this ceremony. So a couple of housekeeping items for everyone in attendance. Please keep your microphones on mute during the ceremonies. Uh, this will help so that way everyone uh, can hear our speakers. Um, now, please feel free to turn off your videos as well. Uh, this helps with bandwidth for some of the attendees. I also understand if some of the classmates want to see each other. Um, some of you look like you're at the golf course. Some of you are having parties. So totally cool. You, you may as well keep those videos on if you'd like. One thing we will say is that when your loved one is called out, you are welcome to unmute and cheer for them as much as you want. This is their day, let's celebrate them, right? Yeah. So we have a ceremony today where, where we will honor the graduates in Masters of Science and Vision Science, Doctor of Philosophy and Vision Science, or PhD, and Doctor of Optometry degrees. In addition, you'll hear presentations from your student leaders and a commitment that our, our graduates will make by reciting an oath. And before we get started, I wanna take a moment to thank those who made all of this possible. I want to thank all of our faculty, staff, and administrators who have done just an amazing job supporting and working with each of you while you've been here at Pacific University College of Optometry. You could not be here without their support and guidance, and we wouldn't be here without you. Uh, I want to call out a few individuals to thank specifically Mickey Buckingham, Lena Armstrong, Sarah Pitcannon, Nora Garfias, Marcy Brown, Dr. Carol Reimer, Dr. Beth Kinoshita, the Research and Awards Committee, which is composed of uh, Dr. Ken Eklund, Dr. James Kundart, Dr. Sue Littlefield, and Jared Michael Lambert. And of course, the Optometry Class of 2021 President, Dr. Thomas Wynn. Yeah. So I would also like to provide a special thank you to a few staff and faculty who are departing the program this year. Uh, to Lisette Romig, uh, who is returning to the Netherlands to be with her family, we appreciate her decades of service to Dr. Tracy Dahl for her amazing work ethic and passion for dry eye, to Dr. Hannah Shinoda, who has taken a position at Kaiser Permanente. She earned tenure and was so impactful for our students and faculty. We will definitely miss her as well. To Marcy Apple, who is our uh, amazing optician in our Hillsboro eye, 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 eye trans clinic. Um, she's retiring at the end of this academic year and she's been in so many years of service to our patients, faculty, and staff. And I've appreciated our discussions on all things eye care as well as music. Uh, to Dr. Liz Davis, who after decades of teaching in our clinic has decided to retire. Uh, she has such a great approach and ability to work with our students and patient models. I will miss her warm, calming presence and the joy that she brings to teaching. And to Dr. John Hayes, who is retiring after the summer. While he will still help us out with teaching certain courses, we're very grateful for that, by the way. Um, it will not be the same as having him here. He has been so instrumental to our vision science program and optometry program. He is engaging, jovial, and is someone who makes each individual he works with better. So I wish him luck and appreciate his willingness to stay on in a part-time capacity. So again, thank you to all the faculty and staff who have made such a huge difference in our program, and we wish those who are departing our program well. So typically, this ceremony occurs the day before commencement, uh, but we move this to, the, to, to Saturday, um, uh, and it's the day of commencement. Some of you may have already watched the video that has been released by Pacific University. We're definitely saddened that we cannot be together as you are an amazing class and, and not being able to see you and socialize is, is disappointing for each and every one of us. Uh, the hope is that we can find a way to catch up in the future, whether that is at a conference, you just stopping by to say hello, um, or a special event for the class of 2021. We will figure out a way that we can celebrate together. Now, I have the honor of introducing one of your classmates for as our first speaker. Uh, this, your classmate, has the distinction of earning the highest GPA in your class. She is from Wilsonville, Oregon, and earned a Bachelor of Arts in Biology from Augustana College in Illinois, and returned to the beautiful Northwest for optometry school. Her hobbies include running, hiking, and eating snacks. After graduation, she plans to complete a residency in primary care and ocular disease at the Santa Fe Indian Hospital. She has earned the respect of her classmates, faculty, and staff. I've seen her hard work and the passion she has for our profession. I'm certain that she will be an amazing clinician. It is with great honor that I would welcome Dr. Sophia Reese to the virtual podium.
Thank you so much, Dean Horn. It's such an honor to be recognized like this. I'd also like to thank my parents for supporting my dreams and for all the, uh, over all these years. And uh, I'd like to thank all our wonderful faculty and staff who have worked so hard to make our time at Pacific. Most of all, I'd like to thank my classmates for all their dedication, friendship, and support over these last four years. If the last year has taught us anything, it's that time is a construct. Some days feel like a month, and some months feel like just yesterday. I haven't reliably known what month it is in quite some time now, but what I do know is that whatever month or year it is, I'm glad I have my Opto family to guide me on this journey because I've cherished every second with you. From gathering around a whiteboard to gathering around a hot pot, from Friendsgiving to Zoom calls, the connections we formed here are meaningful and lasting. I know that if we can make it through this year, then we can make it through anything. The support of our classmates, faculty, and staff has carried us through and will continue to bolster us as we move on to wherever our lives will take us. Looking back at the hard times, practicing relentlessly for checkouts, studying for boards only to have it canceled, and working through a pandemic, what stands out to me the most is the companionship of my classmates. Likewise, the good times we've had uh, have also been marked by the joy we felt at being together. At ski trip and camping trip, at creek days and nights spent cooking a meal together, the connections we formed here are what, we'll, what we will remember the most about our time together. Now, as we celebrate all of our hard work, although we can only be with each other virtually, our friends and classmates are here to cheer us on. And as we go forward into our lives, onto jobs and residencies that will take us across the continent, the friendships we've made here will continue to support us and celebrate us in everything we do. I know in the future, whether it's two years or 20 years from now, we'll be able to count on the community and support of the class of 2021, wherever life takes us. And to memorialize all the times we spent together, a group of students has put together a virtual yearbook for us. Um, the link should either be in the Zoom chat or will be in there shortly, and it'll be live. Thank you so much to Michelle and everyone who helped work on that and bring that project together. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Reese, that was great. And congratulations on being valedictorian of your class. So I now have the honor of welcoming your second speaker of the ceremony. Uh, the next individual grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska and earned a, and earned a degree in chemistry at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. After undergrad, he had a photography business and traveled to 19 countries. In addition, he taught English in Spain for a year. After this time, he worked at a private practice in Lincoln, Nebraska. He stated that he kind of decided on a whim to go to optometry school. I'm glad that you did. Uh, he knew Pacific was the school for him as the doctor he worked with uh, told him that it was a family oriented culture. He said that he likes the wholesome vibe at our school. He likes to be outside, um, or sorry, he likes the wholesome vibe at our school. Um, and it's more about the overall individual rather than their academic abilities. In his free time, uh, he likes to be outside, as I mentioned, which is a big reason why he loves the Pacific Northwest. After graduation, he will be at Casey Eye Institute as the Medical Contact Lens Fellow. He someday hopes to either start a contact lens clinic in an ODMD practice or open one of his own. Eventually, he said when he gets gray hairs, he wants to teach. Now, Thomas, last time I saw you, I saw quite a bit of gray hair. So when you're ready to teach, you just let us know, right? Um, no, but seriously, uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Thomas Wynn to the, to the virtual podium. Go, Thomas! Hello, everyone. Uh, it's kind of crazy that we're meeting again like, uh, like this. Um, some of you may remember me from last time. I gave a speech at our white coat ceremony and things were much different. Um, we were able to be together in person. You know, I, for, I wore actually full on dress clothes instead of just a nice top. Um, times have changed and like much of this year, we're only able to be together virtually. Um, although I'm unable to be with my family in Nebraska, I'm at least able to celebrate with my family here in California. So I hope that many of you are with your friends and family today to celebrate this great achievement. While being virtual has been somewhat of a convenient for some, it's also taken a toll on many. This last year, I've had a lot of conversations with patients that just revolve around how their lives have changed due the, to, to the pandemic. Some of the most common complaints I've heard is, you know, being at home has taken a toll on my body. You know, I've gained weight, my blood sugar is out of control, can't see well anymore, or I feel tired all the time. My eyes are strained and dry because I'm on the computer all day. And then some say it's affected my mental health. 
I can't, I can't clearly see a brighter future. I listen to them and ponder what I could say to make things better. Um, and my advice I can think of is to blink with intent. I actually don't say this because who wants to be told that blinking will make things better because it really doesn't. But blinking is an important mechanism we use for many things. Reflex blinking protects our eyes from debris and foreign objects and from the infamous air puffs at the eye doctor that we all hate. Blinking is connected to our emotions. For instance, if we are having a conversation and you aren't blinking, I'm gonna be a little scared. Normally, we blink about every six seconds in order to replenish the nutrients at the surface of our eye. This serves to keep our eyes comfortable and provide clear vision. But when we're focused on something very important, we actually tend to blink a lot less. Studies show that you know, our blink rate can reduce up to 66%, leading to symptoms like dry eyes and blurred vision. This happens often, even with the most simple tasks. For instance, when you have a patient that you know has 20-20 vision, and you ask them, which is better, one or two? And it's silent. So you ask them again, which is better, one or two? And they say, none. I can't see anything. And I'm like, oh, come on. Then you tell them to blink. And they say, oh, TCV ECL. Oh, that's easy. It's blurry because they concentrated so hard on the letters because they were afraid to choose the wrong answer. They just forgot to blink. As we approach our new careers, we're faced with more complex questions than one or two. It's no longer as simple as studying and taking exams or working under someone else's license. We're on our own and it's crucial for us to keep our vision clear. So I remind you all, blink with intent because ahead of us lies the path to our careers. It's ours to take and grow however we want. Blink with intent to progress our profession and fight for the right to enhance our patient care. Blink with intent to care for people in our local and global communities. Blink with intent to love one another and treat each other with kindness regardless of our skin color, religion, political beliefs, or sexual orientation. Blink with intent to change the world, whether it be fighting for social injustice, protecting our mother earth, or improving access to healthcare. Blink with intent to keep yourself healthy, both mentally and physically, because you are the most important person to take care of. Blink with intent because life goes on, and eventually one day you'll blink and realize how much time has passed and how much has changed. You'll reminisce and hopefully feel fulfilled with your intent and blink with intent because just around the corner, there is a brighter future. So next time you have a difficult patient in your chair and you have no idea what the problem is, don't stress. Step back, take a deep breath, blink with intent, and then Google it. So there's many of us, so, so many people for us to thank. And so let's start with our faculty. Just wanna thank you for all your mentorship. We've enjoyed learning from you throughout the year. So you set the bar very high for what a doctor should be. Thank you for the administrative staff for putting up with us and making our lives a lot easier. There's so much background work that you put in to make our experience at PUCO that much smoother. Special thanks to Lena for always keeping your candy bucket full and for answering all our questions, even if it's late into the night. To Nora for all the efforts with our clinical rotations that we had so many unexpected turns this last year, you made it a lot smoother. To Sarah for always listening to us during these hard times and helping us navigate our thoughts. To Mickey and Marcia for setting up the Welcome to Profession, even though it's not the most ideal situation, it's the best we can do. To all the deans, you took on a new role during these unprecedented times. To Dr. Horn for teaching us not only how to communicate with our patients, but how we should treat each other as humans. Thank you for always listening to us and fighting for us. To Dr. Kenoshita, you're a boss. You're, you show us what hard work and determination can do to achieve greatness. You move mountains for us, and it's truly sad to see you go. Good luck with all your future endeavors. To Dr. Reimer for your leadership that helped us get back on track into clinic during fourth year. We appreciate your efforts to maneuver us around as we ran into roadblocks this last year. I wanna thank everyone here, all our friends and family in attendance. You guys have shaped us for the success we achieved today. We couldn't have made it this far without you. I wanna give a shout out to my family in Vietnam that's in attendance today. It's like 
2 a.m. over there. I appreciate being here. I love you all. I miss you. Lastly, I want to thank my classmates for your friendship and camaraderie. You made the last four years some of the greatest of my life. I look forward to being your colleague in the professional world. We're the best class that Pacific has ever seen in many years. I have no doubt that we'll come out as some of the greatest eye doctors in our generation. Good luck with everything. I hope we, we can reunite soon and talk about the good times. Go Thomas! Go Thomas! Go! That's my president. That was awesome, Thomas. Um, my eyes were blinking because they started sweating. So nice, very nicely done. So, um, so it is now the time of the ceremony where we are able to honor some of the class uh, with awards. Uh, you have all learned a lot from the next time you remember. Um, he is truly an advocate for his patients, students, and our program. I have the honor of welcoming the Chair of the Research and Awards Committee to present the 2021 awards. Please welcome Dr. James Kundart. Thank you, Dr. Horn. Let me see if I can just maximize our I can PowerPoint so we can share it. Okay. Hopefully you can all see that. All right, there were certainly uh, many of you deserving of uh, awards this year. The Research and Awards Committee operates uh, with anonymous contributions that we, we rank in a masked fashion. And I, I only wish we could give more than the 16 or so that I'm about to announce. Starting with the Vision Science students, there are two Vision Science Graduate Awards we'd like to share this year. And they are for the best Master in Vision Science Research Award. These awards will go to Omnia Gondura and Rachel Bryan. Woo! Yeah, Omnia, yeah, Rachel. Woo, Omnia. That was so good. Yay! Yay. 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 <laughs> Congratulations, you both. I'd like to move on to the Optometry Graduate Awards. The first we have is the Vision Service Plan, American Academy of Optometry Foundation Practice Excellence Scholarship for students who have demonstrated clinical and academic excellence and a commitment to inter-independent practice in optometry. And this year, the award goes to Christina Goodrich and Megan Schmouter. Congratulations, you both. The next award is the Optometric Physicians of Washington, or OPW Student Member of the Year Award. This is for a student who has distinguished themselves in the areas of professional leadership, academic achievement, and public concern, and who best exemplifies the association's values. And this year, the award goes to Anjali Rupella. <laughs> Congratulations. The Optelec Low Vision Award is for a student who has excelled academically and or who has contributed to university service in the area of low vision. And this year, the award goes to Alfonso Sitenga. Woo! Go Alfonso! Congratulations. The Pacific University Alumni Association's Outstanding Graduate Award for Optometry is for exceptional service to the college or, and or university and uh, for showing promise to be a committed alumnus. And this year the award goes to Michelle Lee. Congratulations, Michelle. The next award is the Eschenbach Low Vision Student Award for exceptional aptitude and interest in the field of low vision. And this year, the award goes to Catherine Ewer. Congratulations.
Designs for Vision Incorporated, William Feinblum Low Vision Award is next. And this is for a student who has shown outstanding achievement in the field of low vision. And this year, the award goes to Megan Schmouter. Congratulations. The Donald A. Bybee Memorial Award for Vision Therapy is for the best performance in the area of VT. And this year, the award goes to Austin Jensen. Woo! Get it, Austin! Congratulations. The Pacific University College of Optometry Outstanding Clinician Award is for outstanding performance as an all-around optometric clinician. These data were gathered from your Metatrek reviews and reviewed anon anonymously by the Research and Awards Committee. And this year, the award goes to Ian Cheslock. Congratulations. Woo, go Ian. Yeah, Ian. <laughs> the Pacific University College of Optometry Private Practice Student Scholarship Award is to support students intending to pursue private practice in optometry after graduation. And this year, the awards go to Nung Do and Megan Schmouter. Congratulations. The College of Optometrists and Vision Development, or COVD award, not to be confused with COVID, for excellence in vision therapy is awarded to a COVD student member who demonstrated strong interest in excellent clinical skills in the area of vision therapy. And this award goes to Megan Cousins. Congratulations. Woo, go Meg! Woo! Yay, Meg! The Johnson & Johnson Vision Care Award for Excellence in Contact Lens Patient Care is to recognize an outstanding student clinician who has demonstrated excellence in contact lens patient care. And this year, the award goes to Anjali Rupella. Oh, Anjali! Congratulations. The Tolly Greenstein Award is for outstanding contribution in vision therapy or pediatrics through research or clinical application. And this year, the award goes to Anna Webster. Congratulations. Go, Anna. Yay, Anna. The Beta Sigma Kappa Silver Medal Award is for the valedictorian of the class of 2021. And this year, the award goes to Sophia Reese. Congratulations. Woo Sophia! The Gas Permeable Lens Institute Contact Lens Clinical Excellence Award is awarded to a student who shows interest and enthusiasm in the fitting of gas permeable contact lenses in the clinical environment. And this year, the award goes to Nicholas Grant. Congratulations. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Go next! The doctors, I think this is the last one I have, and then I'll turn things back over to Dean Horn, but the doctors Dennis L. Smith and Nada J. Lingle Award for Excellence in Systemic Disease is in recognition and honor of a student's hard work, skill, and dedication to understanding systemic disease and providing comprehensive healthcare to their patients. And this year, the award goes to James Dalgan. Congratulations. How you doing, James? Yeah. Congrats, James. Congrats. All right, James. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is the point where I turn things over to Dr. Horn. Yes. Before I move on to the next one, just a happy birthday to Dr. Lingle. So um, I have a, a, it's humbling to be able to honor an alumni in his family with this next award. Um, I wanna give you some context about uh, the late Dr. Brian Hill. Um, each class at Pacific University has someone the students consider their go-to person. 
For the class of 95, that student was Brian Lee Hill. Always upbeat, always smiling, Brian took on his leadership role in the class without reservation and served on many class and college committees. Brian started at Pacific University in 1991 after uh, completing his degree at Central Washington University. Brian was passionate about optometry and loved his time at Pacific. He was a strong unifier and organizer who often brought the entire class together for studying or social events. He was a loyal and unconditional friend to classmates, faculty, and staff. Brian took the same enthusiasm to his other loves, the outdoors and the environment. He spent many summers working for the Forest Service. Upon coming to Pacific, he joined the Forest Grove Forestry Department. In the fall of 1993, he died tragically in a vehicular accident while on fire patrol outside of Gales Creek. He was 26 years old and beginning his third year of optometry school. Sorry. Uh, it's touching because my brother was in his class. So um, at his memorial, regional firefighters and law enforcement officers joined in a procession to campus to honor Brian. Brian received his doctor of optometry posthumously in 1995. Through the generous support of Monty and Lilas Hill, two amazing individuals, uh, the student lounge in Jefferson Hall is named in honor of their son, Brian Lee Hill. The family, parents, Monty and Lilas Hill and sister Tina Hill and friends of Brian have established the Brian Lee Hill OD 1995 Memorial Fund to be awarded to a fourth year College of Optometry student as he or she transitions from student to practitioner. This is a special award. It's named after an amazing individual, but it's also special because this is where the students vote on who represents the characteristics of leadership and being an unconditional friend. The recipient this year was born in Berkeley, California and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. She completed her bachelor's at the University of California Davis in 2014, where she fell in love with vision science and decided to focus on pursuing pre-optometry and vision research. After graduating, she took some time off to work within the field of optometry. She began her optometric education in 2017 at the Pacific University College of Optometry, which was her top choice university. Thank you for that, by the way. She also decided to pursue her master's of, vision in, of, of, of science in vision science. Recently, she accepted a residency position and within the Portland VA healthcare system with hopes of finding her career path next, wherever that may take her. And no matter what, we know she will be successful. When not thinking about eyeballs, she likes to explore her creative side with activities like embroidery, drawing, and painting. Um, she actually thought about going to art school again. Thank you for coming to optometry school. Uh, she also very much enjoys the outdoors, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, and she has recently taken up fishing. So it's truly an honor to recognize the 2021 Dr. Brian Lee Hill Award to Dr. Michelle Lee. Congratulations. Michelle. Oh, Mish. So is uh, the final award of this ceremony is the Dean's Award. And this is given to someone who I have already told you about. The Dean's Award is a special award as it is a recognition of someone who is not only an excellent student and leader, but also has a commitment to Pacific University's mission. I've had the opportunity to have multiple meetings with this individual. And what strikes me is his balanced approach and his consideration of what is not only best for his classmates, but also what is best for the program. And these all don't always align. I have so much respect for this individual, and it only grew as he was the student representative on our college's, uh, on our college's COVID task force. He stood up and helped alongside our faculty in deciding our initial responses to the global pandemic. He's also very well known for taking photos. Um, uh, uh, some of these photos you're going to see are, are, are from actually his wonderful work. So I look forward to his continued success in all of his endeavors. Um, you know, I, I am looking at your photo. I think I see a few more gray hairs. So must be that you're getting ready to come back. So in all seriousness, no, in all seriousness, I am so excited for this individual, and I am so excited and honored to provide the dean's award to Dr. Thomas Wynn. Woo! Go Thomas! Go Thomas! Go Thomas! Yay, Thomas! So, congratulations to all of the award recipients. Um, this is this is awesome. So, congratulations. Now, Dr. Kundar, are you going to keep going with this? Which is fine if you are. 
I assumed I was going to stop the share and let it be controlled in Jefferson now. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Feel free. Oh, shit. <laughs> So hopefully you can all see this slide. So now we get the opportunity to actually introduce you to all of the class of 2021. Um, I, I thought about giving you all an award and it was gonna be called the College of Optometry Very Important Doctor Award, but the acronym is COVID. So I really didn't think it was appropriate for the Dean to give you all COVID. Sorry, a little dad humor, just to try to make you laugh a little bit. Um, instead, we want to honor all of you that will be receiving an even more special award, your degrees. Again, you're welcome to take yourself off mute to cheer off your loved ones when their names are called. Um, I'd like to welcome Dr. Yu Chi Tai to begin recognizing our graduates in vision science. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you. I have the honor to present you the receivers of the graduate uh, students um, from our vision science programs. First, the receivers of the Master in Vision Science degree. These students have to pass many of the rigorous courses, including 47.5 and more 20 hours of work, read hundreds of pa papers for Dr. Rios and Dr. Uh, Kundar seminars, and including for their own speakers uh, uh, as well. And they have to write many, many of Dr. Hayes' statistical homework and know what is p-value and what is uh, the meaning uh, of the p-value and then how to calculate the effect size. And then they have to pass uh, the proposal uh, exam. They have to pass a rigorous um, examination in the thesis defense. So finally, and they, they also have to go through the trouble during the pandemic time, the challenge time, in order to get the data, including fighting with, sorry, working with IRB to get the IRB approval. So that's an unbelievable hurdle to jump over, but they did it. So I have the honor to present you the receiver of the Master of Science, even Vision Science degree. Let's go with them one by one. Yoshiyuki Araki. Congratulations, Yoshi. Congrats. Congrats. Oh, Yoshi. Thank you very much. Ooh. Rachel Amazon Mary Bryant. Yay! Go, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Congrats. Woo, go, Rachel. Go, Rachel. Amya yeah. Adam. Yay. Yeah. 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 Congrats. Congratulations. Oh, Michelle no. Kara Lee. Woo! Go me! Go oh, Michelle! Michelle! The screen safe. Yanting Liu. Congratulations, Jojo. Congrats! Oh. Oh. Thomas My Nun. Andrew Price. Congratulations. Congratulations, Andrew. Now, the Doctor of Philosophy in Vision Science degree. These students have to pass. 60 credit hours or more of the uh, coursework and pass a very rigorous uh, topical area exams. That including not only the written exam of all four, uh, all three areas, but also an oral exam. One person facing five faculty members and through the two hours um, of the, the exam. And then they have to pass a written uh, early research to show that they, they are capable of independent research and then go through the public proposal exam before they can submit the IRB and then work with the IRB to get the data collected. Many of them have to go through one, two, or more, or, or more than two, maybe three or four studies in order to conclude their dissertation. This is a long journey, but they choose to do it and they have no regrets and they are going to be 
they are becoming a very good independent researcher. And we are so proud of them. And then let me present you the Doctor of Philosophy in Vision Science degree receivers. Nawaf Munir Amatari. I'm proudly to call you doctors Nawal, doctors okay. Nawal. Now you can add the PhD to behind your name. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> So I'm turning the, 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 the speaker to uh, Dean Hong. Thank you, Dr. Tai, and congratulations to the master's and PhD recipients. That is so awesome. And, and, and I love our international uh, celebration. So thank you so much for being a part of the program. I now have the honor of recognizing the graduates for the Doctor of Optometry degree. Um, Dr. Tai did an amazing job talking about the credit hours. Um, credit hours. Um, I will tell you that I was not as prepared as Dr. Tai is. I will just tell you that all of them did, uh, you know, thousands of credits probably. And no, I'm joking, but they, they, they spent a ton of time. But truly, you all know what they had to do. So now it's, it's my opportunity to say all their names and, and to recognize the doctors of optometry. First, Dr. Dr. Lucas Ashfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. William Hour. <laughs> Dr. Krista Ballard. <laughs> Dr. Nimi Bannipal. <laughs> Woo. Dr. James Beard. Woo. Okay. Go, James. Dr. Patricia Beetson. Dr. Levi Black. Woo. Dr. Shelby Bor Borsmeyer. Woo, Shelby! Dr. O'Malley Bazonic Neely. Oh, she a queen! Woo! Dr. Lewis Bruniel. No, it Yeah. Dr. Jade Brunswald. Dr. Rachel Bryant. Yay, Rachel! Dr. Torin Carver. Yay, Torin! Yay, Torin! Dr. Ian. Cheslock. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> Dr. Griffin Christensen. Woo! Yeah, Griff. Dr. Megan Cousins. <laughs> Dr. Taylor Davis. Taylor. Dr. Jason Dollywall. Dr. Jasmine Dinza. Go, Jasmine. Jasmine. <laughs> Dr. Nung Do. 
Dr. James Taugen. Dr. Benjamin Fear. Go, Ben. Dr. Josue Gonzalez Pena. Yes, wait. That's my husband. That's my husband. Dr. Christina Goodrich. Go, Christina! Yay, Christina! Three! Three! Dr. Nicholas Grant. Woo! Nick! Dr. Hope Henry. Yeah! Dr. Amanda Hansen. Dr. Justin Coulter Hart. Dr. Shweta Harvey. Okay. Dr. Brittany Hertz. Oh, Dr. Peter Hovander. Yeah, Peter. Got a boy pistol. Oh, go Pete. Are we ready? I'm trying. Dr. Austin Jensen. Yeah. Austin. Yeah, Austin. Austin. Dr. Romney Kaur. Dr. Katie Kerr. Dr. Landon Kuderna. Dr. Harry Luckin. <laughs> Dr. Jahira Lasala. Yeah, Good job, Jahira. <laughs> Dr. Matthew Lee. <laughs> 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 Find it out perfectly there. <laughs> Dr. Michelle Lee. Oh, yeah, Michelle. Dr. Pavle Lozo. Hey, go Pav. <laughs> Dr. Kirsten Moss. Hey. Dr. Josh Joshua Mackner. Yes. Dr. Carly Mann. Way to go, Carl. Yeah, Carly. Carly. Yay, Carly. Dr. Caitlin Marshall. Go, Good job, Marshall. Go. Dr. Richard yes. Martin. Woo! Dr. Kieran McMillan. Kieran. Congrats. Dr. Madison Melton. Dr. Clements Mendoza. Let's go! Let's go! Yeah! Hey, Clements! Let's go! Congrats, Clem. That's awesome. Dr. Sanjeet Minhas. Sunny! 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 Dr. Kate Muramoto.
Okay. 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 Dr. Crystal Nelson. Oh, yeah, Crystal. Oh, Crystal. Dr. Matthew Newbold. Yeah. Dr. Hal Wynn. Go, Hal! Oh, 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 oh. Dr. James Wynn. Go, James! Go, oh, James! Go, oh, James! Dr. Thomas Wynn. Oh, 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 President. Go, Thomas! Dr. Adam Peters. Dr. Andrew Price. Go, Andrew! Go, Andrew! 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 Dr. Dilpreet Ray. Dr. Sophia Reese. Woo! Woo! Sophia! Sophia! Dr. Connor Robertson. <laughs> Dr. Kimberly Rossman. We're so go, Kim. We're proud of you. Thank you. That's not true. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dr. Hey. Oh, Anjali. Congratulations. Dr. Lily Sam. Yeah, yeah, Lily. Yeah, Woo! Hey, Lily. Yeah, Lily. <laughs> Dr. Danielle Schleicher. Yeah! Dr. Megan Schmouter. Yeah! Oh, Megan! Yeah! Oh, Megan! Yeah! Dr. Drew Schwartz. Woo! Go, Drew! Woo you rock! Good job, Drew. Dr. Harvey Shergill. Oh, oh, boy, Harvey! Let's go! Yeah. Oh, boy! Congratulations, Vadanya! Dr. KG Shiyamura. That's my boy! No comment on the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Alfonso Satanga. Good job, Alfonso. <laughs> Dr. Thomas Sprouts. <laughs> Way to go, Thomas. Way to go. Way to go. Dr. Chantel Steele. Hey, Good job, Chantel. Good job, Chantel. Good job, Chantel. Good Chantel. Good job, Chantel. Yeah, baby. Sorry. <laughs> Dr. Seth Stofferin. Go, Seth. Yes, yeah, Seth. Good job, Seth. Woo -hoo. Dr. Zara Tahir. Yeah, Woo! Zara. Good job, Zara. Dr. Greg Tanner. Go, Greg! Oh, Greg. Greg. <laughs> Dr. Caitlin, too. Congratulations. No, way to go. Dr. Paige Tom. <laughs> go, Paige. Oh, Paige, we love you. Free hey, eyeglasses for life. Dr. Jessica Tran. 
Middle East. Dr. Kevin Trang. Good job. We got one of them on up. One of Dr. Duke Trung. Good job. Good job. Let's go, Duke. Dr. Catherine Ewer. Yay! Good job, Catherine. Yay, Catherine! Dr. April Waldenbach. Woo! Yeah, April! April! Yay, April! Good job, April. Woo! Yeah, April! Dr. Jansen Walker. Yeah, go Jansen. Yeah, go Jansen. I'm so... Dr. Stephanie Warden. Dr. Anna Webster. Congratulations. It's broken. Dr. Catherine Wong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Shaden Zangana. Woo! Woo Shane. Good job, Shane. Woo! Yeah. Thanks. Dr. Tyler Zog. Woo! Tyler. Good job, Tyler. Oh, jeez. And last but definitely not least. Dr. Gabriel Zelaya. Hey! Hey! Cute baby. Hey, Dr. Zelaya! <laughs> so congratulations to all of our graduates. Um, so it is now time to recite the optometric oath. Uh, so I'm gonna invite the class of 2021 graduates uh, to join me in reciting the oath. Uh, we've done this with other groups in the past, and I will tell you, I'm going to ask you to bear with us with the, um, the fun that's about to ensue, and just know that this is par for the course. It's just part of the fun of doing a Zoom ceremony. So I'd appreciate it if all the class 2021 turns on their videos, uh, unmutes themselves, and then you will join me in reciting the oath. You know, um, expect a little bit of, of, of some fun. All right, so please join oh, me. With full deliberation, uh -huh. I freely and solemnly Hereby commit myself this own oath and obligation. Oath and obligation. Nicely done, everyone. That was good. That was good. It is nice to be so Dr. Harvey would like to start that over. Does that sound good? Uh, so now it's time for me to give you some concluding remarks. Um, 
it, it's great. As I see all these photos, um, I'm reminded of so many different experiences I've had with each of you, uh, you know, meetings, whether that is some of you when you came for your uh, uh, interview and we were snowed in and met at the Grand Lodge. Um, for some of you, you know, it's different experiences, whether it was struggles that you were going through, whether it's leadership meetings, um, but for everyone, it's truly been an honor uh, uh, to be a part of this. So um, these are concluding remarks for the graduates from the MSPHD and OD as they, we send them out to the world. You have all come so far and have learned so much. Um, and, and this is all just to get you started on your careers and professions. It is an exciting and nerve wracking time, but you were all prepared to do great things. For all of, your, of our graduates, I ask that you keep in touch, whether that's a quick email to a faculty or staff member or a visit at a conference, or if you're in Forest Grove, please drop us a line. Um, it, honestly, it is so uplifting to hear from you. Uh, we love getting questions and also just random hellos or thank yous. Those are such a wonderful expression of gratitude and they mean the world to us. I thought about giving you a relatively long speech, um, but instead I'll keep it somewhat short. Um, we, we can do a longer one if we ever get, get together. Um, but I want you to focus, I, I wanna bring up three things for you to focus on uh, in your success in the future. The first one is communication. This is critical to your success. One of my mentors, he would bring up, you could be the best diagnostician, but if you cannot communicate why and how to take these drops, you're not going to help individuals with glaucoma. You're not going to help your patients. So communication is critical. Personally, I am constantly working on my communication skills as I learn something new in so many of my day-to-day -day interactions. In the clinic room, conference room, lecture hall, I am an educator. I'm a resource. I'm an advocate and more. You will be the same in your clinic rooms and your uh, uh, research labs. Now, this communication is only done well when it's effective. It also has to be adapted based off of your audience. You need to adapt your message to your audience for you to be successful. You all have the skills to learn and improve your communication. So I challenge you to keep working on this as it is truly the key to success. Never stop considering how you communicate. The second one is trust. You and your families trusted us to take care of you and to provide you with an education that will set you up for success. I am grateful and humble for that immense level of trust. Your patients, industry partners, fellow scientists and community will put trust in each of you. Trust is a foundation for you to be able to educate and influence others to make a difference. You need to trust your education, trust your resources, trust your own abilities, so don't be arrogant. Trust your colleagues, your staff, your profession, but don't be gullible. You need to set yourself up for success. Put in that extra time to understand a new piece of technology so you can critically analyze the data and apply it to your patients. All of this trust is not for you to be successful and prosper. Rather, it is so that, you're, it, rather it is so that way your patients and others will be successful and prosper and they will be able to trust you. Don't let those who depend on you lose trust in you. Yes, there may be times when trust may, may decrease a little, but by using good communication and demonstrating your integrity, you can regain that trust. The last piece is joy. Um, I wish you all joy in everything that you do. I recognize that not every day will be easy or happy or joyful. However, I hope the good days far outnumber the challenging days. You all have such huge opportunities in front of you and find the one that brings you joy. After all, if you take care of yourself, you are in a good place. Then you can, will do so much better when you take care of your patients, your projects and your family. Please take care of yourself and enjoy everything that you do. With that being said, I want you to know you all bring great joy to me. Um, it has been an honor to get to know you all. As I see you on this screen, I wish I could see you afterwards and just give you a big hug. Um, and I know all the faculty and staff are in the same boat. Um, so please know that I am joyful for you. I am excited for you to go out there and make such a huge difference. And I can't wait to see you in person. We've come to the end of our ceremony. I am so grateful for everybody who joined us today. And I'm overjoyed with celebrating your success. 
I wish you all the best. And on behalf of Pacific University and the College of Optometry, congratulations on your success. And we look forward to seeing each of you soon. Be safe and enjoy celebrating your accomplishments. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Ooh, thank you, Dean Hart. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, Dr. Noah. Congratulations, Congratulations 2021. <laughs> You guys rock. Great job, everyone. Now go party. Congratulations, <laughs> everybody. You made it. I had faith in all of you. <laughs> Good job, class 2021. We love you. Mabruk Khatinawal, yay! Mabruk!